And that opportunity that he had in that Monday night game against the Packers, he makes that catch 9 out of 10 times. Up the sideline, kind of had to dive for it a little bit on his knees. It went right, hit his chest, and out of his out of reach. Adam Thielen's not healthy. And I think it doesn't take a doctor to see that. Another check. Alexander Madison, right? He was a more than capable run, uh, backup running back. I think he'd start on a couple of teams. He is part of this process, this continuity, the winning this year. Because when Cook comes out, hey, we can bring in Madison. We're just going to pound you again. We're going to wear teams out. And that's where the Vikings found success. They pounded Dalvin Cook for 20 times, and then they pounded Alexander Madison five to 10 times. He's not healthy. Rest him. And how about this? Who's on the other side of that defense for the Chicago Bears? Oh, yeah, Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack, and it seems like he's been quiet this year. But, oh, boy, when he plays the Vikings, it's like Andrew Wiggins against OKC. If Khalil Mack played against the Vikings every week, my God, he'd be better than Lawrence Taylor. Khalil Mack dominates the Vikings. In three games against the Vikes, two sacks, one forced fumble, two forced fumbles, and one fumble recovery. He dominates the Vikings, and the way that offensive line played against Monday on Monday night against the Packers, why would you ever roll those dudes out there to play Khalil Mack, Akeem Hicks, and that Bears defense, which is still pretty damn good? There are so many red flags to starting your starters on Sunday. Eric Kendricks, need to have him on the defensive side. Dalvin Cook, without him, he is the Straw that stirs the Vikings drink. Without Dalvin Cook, you might as well pack it up and head golfing. Adam Thielen, big part of the offense, not healthy. Alexander Madison, huge part of the offense, not healthy. Khalil Mack, other side of the ball. Don't be foolish here. Because if Khalil Mack gets a good lick on Kirk Cousins, you can kiss away any type of hope that you have maybe upset in, in Wild Card Weekend. And he is the type. Khalil Mack is a game record. He's a game changer. We know this very well. And Kirk Cousins really struggles against the Bears. For some reason, I don't know what it is, but it seems like every time the Vikings play the Bears, Kirk Cousins is rattled. He looks petrified. He looks uncomfortable. He never seems like he can get his adrenaline down. I don't know if it's the way the Bears rush him. I don't know if it's Khalil Mack coming off the edge. But it always seems like Cousins can really show a bad side of Kirk Cousins when they play against the Bears. There is zero reason for this team, this Vikings team, Zimmer, to start their starters. You have to treat this like a bye week. You have to. you got to get two weeks of rest here. Gear up for Seattle. Gear up for New Orleans. Gear up for Green Bay. Wherever you may be playing on Saturday or Sunday on Wild Card Weekend, you get everyone to lick their wounds and have them ready to go 100%. Because if we, listen, there's been years where I think there's been clear-cut favorites. I don't think there's one this year. I don't even think Baltimore's one of them. You look at the NFC, you've got Seattle, you've got San Francisco, you've got Green Bay, you've got Philly or Dallas, and you've got a New Orleans Saints team. It is up for grabs. And how about this? Treating this like a bye week? is the best case scenario is because what happened when the Vikings came off a of bye week this year? How many points did they put up and who did they play? They played Seattle. They put up 30 points in Seattle. Right? Weigh out the options. Should the Vikings play their starters? Should they rest them? Come on now. Nothing would make me more angry than if the Vikings had to go to Seattle, if they had to go to New Orleans, if they had to go to Green Bay, and we look back at this season, which... Uh, it, it, it's annoying because the Vikings lose one game on Monday night and everyone jumps ship. Oh, Cousins is terrible. This, that, Vikings are... Guys, it's one game. <laughs> it's one game. Every team is due for a stinker. Every team has stinkers. Okay, they have a couple. Houston's had theirs. Green Bay's had theirs. Green Bay lost to the LA Chargers by double digits. Okay? The Vikings lost to Chicago 16-6. They lost a bad one to the Chiefs against Matt Moore, and they lost a bad one to the Packers at home. It happens, guys. It happens. New Orleans, they lost to Atlanta. New England, they got their doors blown off by Baltimore. It is a regular occurrence in the NFL. Maybe not consistently for teams, but it happens. 
And I just can't stand the people that are already jumping ship off the Minnesota Vikings. They're 10 and 5. Okay? Yes. Have they struggled at times against the better teams? Yes. But they're 10 and 5. Playoffs are not an easy commodity to make now, except if you're in the NFC East. This was a boat, boat loaded, boat loaded NFC this year, and the Vikings are sneaking in, whether you like that or not. But don't jump ship. Don't give me all oh, Vikings have no chance because you know that's not true. And you know I'm the most pessimistic Viking fan out here, but it's not true. I liked what I've seen from the Vikings all year. I think when you get a healthy Dalvin Cook in there, you get a good performance from the offensive line, and the defense is playing a lot better. Who knows? You're playing with house money, right? You're the sixth seed. But don't jump ship right now because you lost your best player in that Monday night game. Do not tell me that that's going to be the same team you're going to see in that wild card weekend because I know for a fact it's not. Zimmer's going to have them ready. Zimmer's going to have a good game plan. It's just about the players going out and executing and making winning plays. Vikings did not make winning plays on Monday. They turned over the Packers three times and they scored 10 points off them. Unacceptable. You were up one at halftime. Unacceptable. It happens. Okay? It happens. Vikings didn't make enough winning plays, and they lost. And to be honest with you, the Packers didn't even look that good anyway. They really didn't. Aaron Rodgers does not. I don't fear Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Jones had a great game, but that's not the same Packer team with Aaron Rodgers. Let's shift to this. Kirk Shiraka out at Minnesota, the offensive coordinator this year, who did a phenomenal job with this team and is a huge part of the growth and progression of this program. He completely altered the offense. He made a guy in Tanner Morgan, who a lot of people didn't know what you're going to get from him after Alex uh, Zach Anikstead went down, made him in to a top-tier quarterback in the country, obviously had career years with the wide receivers. So Kirk Soraka is out. He is going to Penn State. To me, this is another sign that this program is headed in the right direction. Nick Saban has to deal with this every single year. Kirby Smart, Georgia, he had he left. He had a successful tenure in, in Alabama, and other programs want him. Jeremy Pruitt, off to Tennessee, was under Saban. Lane Kiffin was under Saban. These great coaches develop these offensive coordinators and these defensive coordinators. These other programs around the country want those guys to be the head guys. So you know you're doing something well if you're P.J. Fleck. And this is, I know in a lot of people's eyes, yeah, it's, it's bad. Shiraka was unbelievable for this program. But I think you should take this as a compliment. I mean, when was the last time that a team like Penn State was running to the phone to go get a guy from Minnesota? I mean, come on. We're, we're moving up in the world. I mean, I gave you the Titanic analogy about Jack finally getting on the ship and he gets to the first class dinner. He doesn't know what to wear. We're starting to feel a little more comfortable. We got invited back to the dinner. Okay? We might have another tuxedo, another bow, another time, right? We starting to feel a little acclimated towards it. That's how you should feel right now. It's a huge compliment that a guy in the Gopher program isn't going to some Middle Tennessee State team to be a head coach. This is a guy that's going to Penn State who finished top 10 in the country, who's a perennial college football playoff team. And he's going to offensive coordinate at a big-time school. So just to give you some background here, this is kind of a love relationship that's going to come to an end. Fleck and Soraka were together since 2010. They met at Rutgers, right? Um, went to Western Michigan together. He's been the right-hand man for him for a while. Leaving for Penn State. Coach Tanner Morgan, some of the, I mean, just a record setting year for Morgan, 10 and 2, first 10 win regular season since 1905, first seven win conference season in program history. His offense was the third highest scoring in Gopher history. They accumulated the second most passing yards, with Tanner Morgan surpassing the marks for passing yards and touchdown passes. Once again, this offense went from vanilla to explosive, to fun, to electric, to dynamic. They had playmakers. They had the right system. They had the right quarterback in there. They put a plethora of running backs at the helm. The offense boasted 
two 1,000-yard wide receivers in Rashad Bateman and Tyler Johnson, as well as one 1,000-yard rusher in Rodney Smith. And all the starters return next year, minus Tyler Johnson and Rodney Smith. So we'll see how the Gophers respond here. They still got their playmakers. I'm assuming they'll stick to the same system. It is a little odd that he's going, Kirk Soraka is going to a Big Ten team. Sometimes you see these other coaches leave the conference at least. This is a guy that probably going to see down the road. Obviously an offensive coordinator, so he doesn't dictate what they do defensively. But you have to wonder if P.J. Flex is going to have to change some sort of the scheme because I guarantee James Franklin's going to be picking his brain about what the Golden Gophers did after the Gophers beat at Penn State this year. Back-to-back undefeated weeks this week for the Strom Sports Show pick. Strom Saturday selection, Strom Sunday selections. I'm on fire right now. It has been an up-and-down game for you, to say the least. But I'll tell you one thing, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Last week, I made a sweet parlay. I had the Jets plus three, they won outright. I had the Cardinals covering ten, they won outright. And then I had the under in the Colts-Panthers game, which barely hit. So it's been an awesome, awesome run here for the last month. Let's keep this thing going. Let's end it the right way. Let's start off in New England. New England is minus 16. Okay, let me tell you something. Miami has really played hard. I mean, they really do. Brian Flores has done a great job with what he's been dealt with. 4-11 with that roster. The guy should be built a statue of Miami at the Clevelander. Miami is tough, man. I'm telling you, they are going to play New England tough. New England is offensively a net. 16 points is way too much. Does Miami win this game? No. But I'm going to take Miami plus 16 on the road. Ryan Fitzpatrick, give me some magic, buddy. Dolphins plus 16. Next one for you. Look, it has been a rocky, rocky season for the Dallas Cowboys. They are favored by 11 points at home. Again, give me the road dog, Washington plus 11. If Haskins was in this game, I would lean towards the Cowboys and the points, but I like what Washington has also done this year. 3-12, and 12, but they're grooming their future quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. Case Keenum is going to lead this team on Sunday. I think he's going to keep them in the game. Who knows, man? I know that the, uh, the Giants want to play spoiler, but can Washington beat the lowly Cowboys right now because they are very lowly. Very, very lowly. 11 points is way too much with the way that this Dallas Cowboy team is playing. Give me Washington plus 11 on the road. Last one for you. Give me Seattle at home. Plus 3 against San Francisco. This is for the title. This is for the NFC West. Give me the experienced quarterback, the experienced coach, Sunday night, it all comes down to this. It's going to be cold. It's going to be rainy. You know that Seattle weather. Let's see what Marshawn Lynch can do. Can he provide a spark for the Seahawks team? Give me Seattle plus three. I think they win outright. I think they win this NFC West with the win here. Give me the Seahawks plus three. In review, Seahawks plus three. We've got the Washington Redskins plus 11 and the Miami Dolphins plus six. Before we say goodbye here, I just wanted to thank everyone for listening. We've put up awesome numbers for the Strom Sports Show. We're going to come down to the new year of 2020. I will post all of the statistics of the show. You guys, really, I could not do this without you guys. You guys really motivate me, and I love doing this, and I love the company. I love Talk North. I love Jim Suhan. I love Brandon Morton, Michael Russo. It's a great, great platform, a great network to work on, and you fans have been awesome. I've made a great boat of followers and following of the show. It's been awesome. I hope we can keep this this thing up and as always you can listen to us on soundcloud itunes iHeartRadio, talknorth.com you want to advertise with us jim suen is a guy everybody have a great happy and safe new year and i will talk to you guys next sunday